we ended up driving out to uh, Farmington Bay on the edge of the Great Salt Lake. There were these amazing swans that were uh, flying around us. They were out in the Farmington Bay in the water. And I just felt like I was on a complete high having that nature fix. In small ways, I guess, I just tried to reframe my thinking, restate my stories, and I tried to give my boss the benefit of the doubt. Day four. At the end of the day, as you were lying in bed, make a mental list of all the things you accomplished today. I tend to focus, and quite regularly, I might add, on all the things I did not accomplish in a given day. In fact, as I was writing out notes for this recording, I was coming off of a day of feeling overwhelmed, but sharing this favorite with you, I'm taking a step back to share what I did accomplish. I actually accomplished a heck of a lot. I moved the proverbial needle and did some things just for me. It was a great day. That's an audio clip of regular people telling stories of how very small but conscious adjustments to daily routine made a big difference in their lives. It's the concept behind a new book called Life, Living Intentionally and Fearlessly Every Day. And author Lori Lee joins me here. Now tell me about this book and the purpose behind it. Well, we create. We create conversations, we create drama, we create families, we create relationships and love and careers, or we don't, right? And one of the things I've learned being the host of the Love Your Story podcast is that our real power as human beings is that through our thoughts and our choices, we can create our own life stories the way that we want to. And when you do this intentionally versus reactive, you have a very different life story. Okay, and to be intentional, we have to know what we want to do. What are some of the things that you suggest in the book for us? The book is full of 21 different challenges, and those challenges are created from experience. I have watched them work with hundreds of people across the United States, um, all genders, socioeconomic status, you name it, right? Um, they work with everybody because they're just truths, and they are small and simple, but make a huge transition. I was w wondering about that. Are these big things or small? You say they're small things. What is the power behind small things? Okay, so this is a really good question because one of the first things people say when I talk to them about the book or when they look at the book is, I don't have time to take on anything else. I'm so busy. And I just want to put that to rest because these challenges are about ways of being. These challenges are not about fitting something else into your day. They really truly are small and simple and they do bring to pass phenomenal changes. But it's gonna be different for everybody. Okay, so, so you're not telling me I have to go take a trip to Thailand. You're right, <laughs> giving me small right. things. Do you have some examples for me? Sure. Um, challenge number one is to work in a random act of kindness into your day. And you heard from the audio clips. These are some of the other challenges that the people have tackled. So they are set up so that each day in the morning you set this table on your book stand you open it up you read what the challenge is and then you just figure out how to work it into your day whatever it doesn't even matter how busy it is because again they're ways of being not actually something that you have to figure out how how do i do this and the idea behind it is that it's a taster's table of of life hacks and you get to try them all out and then keep the ones that you have really meaningful experiences with okay so i love that one random act of kindness what what's another one one of the ones that I like that I have any, um, I can share an example with okay. you is there's one where you need to say 10 things that you love about yourself out loud to yourself. And there was a woman last year that, oh, just a fabulous woman. And she's a life coach and she's really on the ball. She's got a lot of things going. And as she was doing this, she was checking in with me and she was stuck. And which one are you stuck on? Well, this was the one she was stuck on and she just couldn't bring herself to do it, which I didn't understand. But you know, this is what I'm talking about with each challenge affecting people differently. So finally she was able, she took a mirror, she went outside in her back patio and she was able to do this out loud, tell herself 10 things that she loved about herself but it was a difficult thing for her to get to to do. But the, the process of doing that and taking on that challenge for that day was life-changing for her in the sense that it puts her feet on the path of this acceptance, this loving self, this paying more attention to the things that we like about ourselves. And that's, you know, 
one of many, but they are small and easy to implement. And so you have this book, and there you said there are 21 things. So is this something that where we do kind of one thing a day, or how does the book kind of help us with that? However you want. When it first started out, it was an online course, and it was the 21-day challenge. And some of the feedback that we got through focus groups was people feeling badly that they'd gotten behind when they were trying to do it in 21 days. And so as we massaged that and figured out how do we package this for people so that it's positive and not something that's creating more guilt, it came to the forefront that it just needed to be in a book, that people could access it and do the challenges as fast or as slow as they wanted to. So the 21 challenges are set up so that you do the challenge. It's a workbook style. At the back of each challenge, there's a place for you to record what your experience was, which is a super important part. Why is it so important for us to write stuff down? Because it's part of the learning process of it. Like I said, I have watched this work with hundreds of people, and part of the process is the actual implementation of the challenge, but another really important part is that space where you reflect on it, that space where you look at what worked for you and what didn't and what it brought up inside of you, and that discussion afterwards of just sorting through it in your own head, and that's how you start really making sense of what is working for you and what you need and which ones you want to keep. Because 21 is, all 21 of them are not going to connect with every person. By the time you're done and you've tried them all, you'll probably have four, five, six that were really meaningful that you get to keep, but and that you can right incorporate them right into your life. Into your way of being, okay, right? Great. So you're not overwhelmed. How can people connect with you? The Love Your Story podcast. So the website is loveyourstorypodcast.com. And they can also reach me at laurijlee at msn.com. All right. Thank you so much for these tips. Absolutely. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for